Hey, what's up y'all? God bless. I hope you're still having a good day. I wanted to get on here really quick uh, because I had this thought. Um, or uh, I'm, I'm listening to a, a Hebrew study and um, sort of this came to mind. Um, this was, uh, it was said and then I could, I could apply it to my own life um, in the sense of we're, we're running this race with patience, right? Um, <clears throat> And we have this this race set before us that it's you know it's sort of like a marathon. We're just going to keep going, keep going, keep going, and we got to stay straight. We got to stay straight. We got to stay focused on Jesus Christ. And as I shared earlier in uh, one of my other videos about just the Pharisaical spirit, just being a Pharisee and pointing you and putting you under the law and condemnation and ordinances and traditions of men saying you've got to do this, wag, wag, wag your finger. It gets it gets me a little heated. It gets me a little riled up, and God, thank God uh, that I, that we have the Holy Spirit within us that that quells the fire that, that calms it down. Um, because when I when I see that, I get mad and I want to rage a little bit. It's that righteous anger of like, no, be quiet. You're wrong, and I and I really want to do that. But sometimes the Lord is just like, hey, leave it alone. Leave it alone. And I say, and I'm like, okay, okay. Um, because there are times when he has said, leave it alone, and I have not, and it has blown up. And then I am, then I go forward and I say, you know what? Okay, that was a mistake. Let's not do that again. So running this race, I'm getting to the point, I'm sorry. Running this race, staying straight on Jesus Christ, and we are seeing people run left and right and take turns all over the place, falling away from the faith. The faith is our faith in Jesus Christ. It's the fact that our conscience is cleaned and satisfied with the blood of Jesus Christ. We do not satisfy our conscience with believing in Jesus Christ and then making a left turn and then going and following laws and ordinances of men. You are then putting yourself back under law and back under bondage, which will confuse you if you are even, it will confuse you to make you think that if you are even saved because you will fail. You will fail trying to, to keep yourself saved by a, pay, uh, by a performance of holiness and law keeping. You will fail. Everyone will fail. That is why the law is there. The law was not there so that righteousness could come by the law. Righteousness was there to point us to Jesus Christ so that when he came, we could believe on him and see, wow, the law did really tell us we needed a savior. And that savior is Jesus Christ and he has done everything for us. So we say straight, focused on Jesus Christ and we are our conscience is satisfied with Jesus Christ and his propitiation his substitutionary sacrifice that he paid it all he took on every bit of judgment that was meant for us he died and tasted death on our behalf we are fully forgiven and fully accepted in the beloved we are not fully accepted in the beloved and by keeping laws or ordinances so when people are running and they stop looking at Jesus Christ and they start to look at what do what else do I need to do? What else do I need to do? It's a very slippery slope. I've been there. It is not a good place to be and I it's not satisfying either. All it does is leave you empty and dry and hungry and thirsty and confused and full of condemnation and fear because you're like, "Well, I've made a mistake again and I just can't keep this law, but I've got to try even harder." No, you're just you're shooting yourself in the foot. People are going left and right, trying to satisfy themselves and satisfy their conscience with law keeping and obeying ordinances and traditions of men by going from Jesus Christ back to Moses. We, we don't want to do that. It may, it may get confusing sometimes as to why it's so simple to, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that in and of itself is one of the most trying things for us, right? Is to just have faith. Because we, there's a lot of input. There's a lot of stimulus coming in from the world. And there's a lot of noise. And there's a lot of attacks of the enemy. So we think that we have gotta, we've got to defend ourselves. And we've got to do these things. And we've got to find our peace and security and our worth. And our self-righteousness elsewhere. Which is all vainglory. And we think that we have to go out and we have to do something. That we've got to strive. That we've got to go and go and go. I used to be like that. I was an adrenaline junkie. I was always jacked on caffeine or I was always in the gym lifting weights or playing sports. I was all the time. Go, 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 go. And I just run myself ragged and beat myself up. God has spent the last two years of my life 
making me wait and sit and do nothing. It has been very difficult, it's been very rewarding, and it has been amazing. Why? Because in that patience, in the resting from my own works, I'm staying focused on Jesus Christ the best that I can. Of course, I fall off, but God brings me back because he is faithful. Amen. Staying focused. And as I rest in the rest that was set aside for the people of God, which is all, all of us born-again believers who have believed and trusted fully in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. There is a rest set aside for us, and as I rested in him, and I rested in that, he would reveal himself to me. And the imparting of his glory, the imparting of his vision and his knowledge of everything that Jesus Christ is to me, oh man, that is what refreshed me. That is what kept me going. That's what strengthened my faith. I did not strengthen my faith by me going and keeping laws. No, I only put myself back under the bondage and fear by doing that, by waiting on the Lord and resting in the Lord saying, okay, I believe in your testimony concerning your son. I believe, I believe, I believe. I'm going to wait and I believe. That's how he's brought me through everything. It's helped to pray. It's helped to be in the word. It's massively helped me to worship. My goodness, my goodness, the time that I have worshipped has have worshiped God, uh, especially in the first year of me being born again, was just it was, it was mind-blowing what God was doing within me as I worshiped and I just agreed with the promises of God and I just applied that faith in what God has said. Amazing. God is so good. He loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Guys, remember, we do not need to satisfy our conscience and satisfy our needs by fulfilling laws, obeying ordinances, building a name for ourselves in this world by being puffed up in performance of any sort, career or sports or it doesn't matter, literally anything. If it's outside of Christ, we don't need it. God will give it to us to enjoy, but we don't hold on to it. We enjoy it while it's there, and if God says a little bit less of that, then we say, okay, Lord, I'll wait for you next. I'll wait for you now to see what you have for me next. Amen? All right, God bless y'all. I love you. Again, have a wonderful day. We are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are kept saved by our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. And God, we will never be plucked from the Father's hand, ever, ever. If you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified, and you have your place in heaven reserved for all of eternity. God will take care of the rest, including your Christian walk. He will take care of it all as we just wait and apply the faith. Faith in the blood. Hallelujah. All right, peace out.